Hey guys, it's Space Sims, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite continuing Gil's route. Hopefully, we don't have a choice soon because my stupid tablet decided windows is like you need to update fuck you no god anyway so we don't have it right now and i feel like waiting i ain't got time for that so anyway hopefully there's no choices but if there are we'll whip out our phone or something or it might be done stop biting my headset bird you are being a jerk i'm not in the mood for your shenanigans you sit down and you behave i will chuck you downstairs no you're starting to boss be a nasty. You're a nasty bird. You're still mad that I left you. If you bite me and you be mean, I'm going to leave you again. I'm not going to leave him again. Don't tell him I'm not going to leave him again. Don't tell him that. I need to keep him in line. Stop biting. Anyway. Once we were finished lunch, I mulled over the earlier conversation while gearing up for the afternoon interviews with members. Right. We were like, uh, excuse me? What the hell? Because they were like, oh my god, if I were married to a rich dude, I would never work again. Got it. Okay. Um. Phew. I didn't expect them to be so curious. But they are advisors, after all, so they're naturally interested in marriage. What's on my schedule this afternoon? Hold on. There we go. Now I got my guy back. Man, I received an unusual email. The subject line read, referred by my older brother. Oh, right. That's, why are we acting like that's weird? It's what's his face? It's, it's Gil's friend's sister. <laughs> that sounds just, Lord knows. Doesn't sound right. Wait, could this be? I recall giving Gil's friend my business card at the Baltimore wedding. Opening the email, I confirmed my guess. It was indeed from the younger sister of Gil's friend who'd express interest in becoming a member. If they don't give this bitch a name and she's just Gil's friend's younger sister, like, as her fucking thing instead of her name, I'm gonna be so mad. I don't expect them to give her a sprite, but... Hours later, I found myself interviewing Gil's friend's sister. Oh, Jesus Christ, she's just gonna be Gil's friend's sister. Yeah, she's just Gil's friend's sister! Oh my god! Oh, dear lord! Oh, so this is Cupid Core. It's wonderful. So I heard that you, Mrs. Lovecraft, can help me find my ideal marriage partner. Mrs. Lovecraft? My new last name was already on my business card. I wasn't quite used to hearing it yet. A touch of bashfulness crept up on me, but I nodded in assurance. Yeah, I'll do my best as your advisor to help you find your ideal partner. But when I discuss it with my friends, they suggest that it might be difficult to find my ideal match in Los York. Of course, not everything may align perfectly. Finding a match requires a bit of luck. But I aim to provide as much support as possible to help you have a happy marriage. That's what all of us advisors strive for. To help match you with someone, please tell me honestly about your ideal partner. I smiled encouragingly and she fell silent for a moment, seeming hesitant. Finally, she spoke up. Your husband. I was always in love with Gil. We're gonna have to kill her. To be honest, my dream is to support my husband. And now, is this what the, the whole thing's gonna be? There's gonna be like all, like, we just went to lunch with those bitches and they were like, oh my god, if my husband was rich, I'd quit my job. I mean, to be fair, I would too. Uh, so can't blame him for that. And then all this, I just want to find a husband and I just want to support his dream and I, nothing about me. Okay, no, no, we're not, that's, we're not doing that. We are not going to tell women that there are I, that they should just strive to support a man. Like, listen, if that's what you do and that's what you choose to do, that is fine. But that is not any more valid than working. Okay? That doesn't make you better. Let's not do this game. Like, is that that's going to be the problem statement that we're facing as we're going through this? Like, with Shelby, it was... He's, stressed out not being a good husband and has a limp dick and in this one it's I'm a horrible wife because I work and I'm not home like making martinis and giving my husband blowjobs the second he comes home like I should be there to just do everything for like, what the what no uh uh no I will handle that we cheated on Shelby with a lobster man 
I am not going to handle that I'm going to be like some subservient housewife. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's a bad ending. Again, unless he's like rich and shit. I mean, I guess. Okay. But like, we didn't even tolerate that with Shelby. He was like, uh, you need to stay home. And we were like, fuck that. And now all these women are going to come in and we're going to like listen to them? I don't know. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I guess there's something to say about the fact that if a woman's like, you should stay home and support your husband, we're like, hmm, maybe. And if her husband's like, you should stay home and support me, we're like, fuck that shit. <laughs> no man's going to tell me what to do. Other women tell me that, sure. Like, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Come on. Come on. You threw that out. I, they actually, I mean, technically, you did throw that at us in Shelby's route. The whole him being like, you should stay home. Don't ever leave the house. He was being crazy, though. And we were like, that's crazy. Don't you dare start this shit. But now they're going to throw it in this and we're supposed to consider it? Like, I don't know. Mm -mm, game. Mm, I don't like that. Don't you dare. I mean, again, I would absolutely quit my job. But I ain't going to be like a housewife. I'm not cooking and clean. I mean, I'll cook, sure. But I'm not like cleaning the house top to bottom, wearing a fl floofy 50s dress, high heels, and like get your martini ready and the kids are quiet. Because we ain't having kids. And like, I'm going to be the one drinking the martinis, bitch. <laughs> I'm not enough of a trophy to be able to like pull that off. But like, look, a girl can dream, okay? There are too many men in that man harem. I don't need to work. Some of them should support me. This is going to be like the main freaking problem, though, I can tell. She went into the nitty gritty of her perfect marriage scenario. I mean, if it's like, here's your perfect man. Also, he is loaded. Gosh darn. That's not, I mean, that's never going to be a problem. That's a bonus. She remembered this foreign drama where they used the phrase, with a wife's help, and it left a big impression on her. This is bizarre. As a result, she was thrilled about her role as a strong support for her husband at home. However, with dual incomes being the norm in Los York, she'd been struggling to find the right person. Again, she just wants someone to support. Okay, like, they're making her sound like a gold digger. I don't think that's the intent, obviously. Like, she wants to be a traditional old-fashioned wife but the thing is is i don't even like saying traditional because it's like that's old-fashioned tradition it's not a modern tradition like just because that's the way it worked in the 50s doesn't mean that's the way it works now or the fact that we should be like oh but women should no no and i think that's why we like even me fighting so hard to get like no uh -uh -uh, because a lot of people haven't gotten out of the mentality of like women's work is to stay home and there's women's jobs and men's jobs and no, okay let's stop that shit let's stop that because like if a man is a stay-at-home dad it's somehow he's lesser than a man who works mostly from really you know y you know the people but like and like women can't do construction yes they can Yes, they can. You know? So, like, let's... Let's just keep our sexist, old-fashioned views away. If you want to be a stay-at-home wife and mother, that's perfectly fine if you can find a man that can support that. And it's cool with that. You know? But, like, I... There's something in my brain still, though, and she's like, I just want to stay at home and support my... It's like, do you, though? Do you really want to do that? Or do you just think you have to do that and people are telling you you have to do Because you know what I mean? We're still in that phase in the world where it's like, oh, you don't support your husband because you work. Like, like, times have changed and yet mentalities haven't fully changed with them. So it's still like, no matter what you do in the world as a woman, you're fucking wrong. So it's kind of like... It's a slippery slope to tread to be like, I want to be a stay-at-home wife. I'm a, that's my, like, I think that that's great and I'd be happy that way. And not, I, I'm happy that way because I'm supposed to be, right? You know what I mean? Like, are you, like, did you blink twice if you need someone to rescue you, you know? Like, I don't want to work. 
I don't want to be a stay-at-home wife and mother. I just want to be rich. So, you know, the problem with that is I don't have money. <laughs> I don't want to support my husband. I just want to be rich by myself. So that would be so much easier. So if someone wants to donate billions of dollars to me, I gladly accept it. Thank you. I love cooking and cleaning. I want to do housework for the person I love. She might need to see a therapist. She likes... I mean, there are weirdos that like cleaning. I wish I had a little bit of that. I just want a little bit of it. Like, to the point where I don't, like, hate it with the passion of a thousand fiery suns. I nodded in agreement with her ideals and was surprised by how similar they were to my co-worker's lunchtime confessions. Many of her business-owning members expressed wanting their wives to stay at home. And the idea that the sister of Gil's friend talked about wasn't all that rare in Cupid Core. It is just weird when they're presenting it like this. Like, oh, no, we, we have people that fit this. It's like, there's a lot of men who want their wives to just be subservient and stay at home. And there's a lot of women who just want to do this. And it's like, his antiquated views are, con that's why it's concerning to me. Because it's not like, oh, there's actually someone who, that's the life that they want. Cool. It's. There's a lot of people that are thinking like this, and it's like, was this game written in 1962? Some members wanted their husbands or wives to stay at home. I heard these requests more often than you'd think. I, it's just concerning. If the match was solid, it'd be a totally doable marriage scenario. Do you think waiting for your working husband to come home is romantic? I think it's classic and romantic in a good way. Okay. So, if I could find that ideal, I totally want to get married. Do you think it'd be difficult? Not at all. Thank you for being so upfront about your expectations. I mean, again, the she, like, we apparently have plenty of men who want their wife to stay home. Okay. It depends on what comes with that. Like, I work enough so you can stay home and enjoy a, the life of leisure and be my trophy wife. Sure. But, like... It, it it just, I guess it really just depends. I don't like cleaning and being someone's housewife. Like, or maid. I don't want to be someone's bang maid. You know what I mean? Like, no. Nah. But I also don't want to. <laughs> That's why I'm just going to die alone. Whatever. It's easier. Yeah. Gil's friend's sister was worried I might not take her seriously. I gave her a reassuring smile. Well, also, I mean, again, because, like, to be fair... There's nothing wrong with wanting that if that's what you really want and not because you feel like you have to want that. You know what I mean? Because there was a time period where it's like, this is what you do, whether you wanted it or not. And now we're in the time period where you should be able to do whatever you want, whether you want to be a housewife, whether you want to be a working girl, whatever you want to do, right? But there's still the mentality of like, if someone is like, I want to stay home, do you? Because, like, people still kind of have these weird expectations. So, like, whatever you choose as a woman, they, someone's expectation is going to be the complete opposite for you. So you're kind of fucked whether, whether you do or you don't. You know what I mean? But, like, you know, it, you should be able to come in there and be like, I this is what I want to do. I think that's great. Cool. And have people take you seriously. But you're also... In the modern age, there's more of a push to be like, no, independent, and you can't be a stay-at-home wife and mother because you're not... Because of the forced mentality that we had decades ago. You know what I mean? And the fact that there are people who still think that you should have to do that. So when you want to do that, you're still... Are you, are you sure that's what you want? Not what you think you have to want. Like, you know? So, like fair to this girl being like this is really what i want and not that i think that i want or people are telling me so people think that, and it's like fair enough fair enough fair enough you know my job as an advisor was to keep our members calm and positive about the matchmaking process but also keep their feet on the ground we have a diverse range of members each with their own unique requests and yes there are members who prefer their wives to stay at home really yes your dream isn't out of reach I'll recommend you for some matchmaking events with members that fit your profile so that you can find your perfect marriage. And I mean, if you think about it, like, guys coming in, yes, I would like to find a perfect wife, but she's going to need to stay at home. The fuck kind of antiquated bullshit is that? Her coming in, I kind of just want to be a housewife. I think that'd be great. What kind of antiquated bullshit? Oh, actually, you're perfect for each other. You know what I mean? 
Like, you'd probably find it hard to go in if you have old-fashioned ideals. You know what I mean? To go in and be like, I like the old-fashioned way. That's the way I want to live my life. There's nothing wrong with that. But, in theory. Because you know there are decent people, but there are raging douchebags who act like this is the way... It, it's... It's the vocal minority that are like twat waffles that make the people who kind of want to st the traditional kind of old fashioned roles that make you when you think that when you say you want that, that they're like, oh, really? You know what I mean? Because you have the misogynistic douche bros who are like, oh, women should stay at home because like, women can't do anything. They're stupid and inferior. And you're like, fuck you. So if there's like a normal dude who's like, no, I make enough money. It'd be cool to just, she doesn't have to worry about working. And then, then like, we'll have kids and she can take care of the kids in the house. And then like, we we'll split the duties and we don't have to work. Cause like, that's what life is. You know what I mean? He's like, I'll bring home the money. And then like, Shh, cause I don't like cleaning and she likes cleaning and that'll be great. Instead of she has to work and she's miserable. And then half the time he has to clean and he's miserable. And then she can do all the cleaning cause she loves it. And he can do all the working cause he likes it. And everybody's happy. But it's the twatty douche bros who make it seem like women should be doing that because they should be subservient. And then that's where the problem comes in. See, and I still have problems with that. Because of people like that. So I think this poor girl is crazy at first. Three hours later. Anyway. Listen. But I just feel like that's they're trying to set this up for this for us to be like, maybe I shouldn't do my maybe I should just service my husband. And it's like, do you enjoy working? Yeah. OK, then shut your mouth and keep your job. You know what I mean? Like they're going to make her doubt herself. And I don't know if I like that, you know, unless she's like, hmm, actually, I don't need to be Cupid anymore. And. I kind of do just want to spend time with Gil and maybe my job is taking up too much time. If that's the decision she comes to, fine. I just don't want it to feel like it's forced on her. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's where they're kind of pushing it. And I don't know if I like that at the moment. Like, I don't know where you're pushing me, but I don't like it yet. I'm not open to it yet unless you do it right. So we'll see. Thank you. She was clearly relieved and started to smile. She must have had friends tell her she was asking for too much. Well, I'm, again, modern world, you know? They're concerned. Are you sure this is what you really want? You never know. Regardless of her dreams or desires, I wanted to work with her to reach a compromise that made her happy. That was my job as an advisor. And again, you want to find a man who's totally cool with that, but isn't like, good, gonna have a subservient housewife. No, you don't want that dude. You want the guy who's like, that is awesome. Because I don't enjoy cleaning and I wouldn't want to take away cleaning from you when you really love it. Sounds weird to think people love cleaning, but some people love cleaning, okay? Some people do. I'm back. I got back from work and realized Gil wasn't home yet. Huh. I thought he said he'd be home before dinner. It had been a while since he was at work, so he might have been abruptly pulled into a conference or dinner meeting. He's the president, after all. There must be tons of stuff only Gil can handle. And see, I mean, that's the thing with, like, with in the Shelby relationship. We were, like, his secretary, so we were always... Even if it was at work, we were at least together. So we got to see him through. It's not like I never saw him until, you know, in some of the other problematic parts where we didn't see him. But, like, for the most part, the happy portion of the relationship was, I was a secretary, we're working together, blah, blah, blah. And then, like... When she went back to being a bridal advisor, it was like, okay, but we make sh sure he leaves work. We make sure that he understands, separate, and does, you know what I mean? Like, you change his perspective on things and, you know, whatever. So. Seeing Gil so swamped, I started thinking about the lunch conversation with my coworkers and the members' requests. And in this one, I could see if she's going to hesitate and think, because again, she's never going to see Gil otherwise, not like we're his secretary. So Gil's friend's sister wanted to support her husband by waiting for him at home. Well, you're waiting for Gil right now. What's the problem? There were also members who wanted to quit their job to support their partner's busy lifestyle. Support her husband. Huh. She looked so happy when she talked about her dream. 
waiting at home every day for her husband. That was a kind of happiness. I wonder what Gil thinks. Does he want me to stay at home? But if I quit my job, I can't do matchmaking anymore. Although, to be fair, half the stuff I don't enjoy doing, like cleaning or straight or doing this, because I don't want to do it after I've stressed myself out all day at work. So I'm not saying I'd love it, but it'd be a little bit more manageable if you didn't have to fucking spend eight hours a day stressed out at fucking work. You know what I mean? I could just spend like four or five hours a day doing this, an hour to clean in here and there. I mean... I'd find a new routine, I'm just saying. Wouldn't be too bad. I'm home. While I was pondering, Gil came back. Gil, welcome home. I'm back, you said that. What happened to you? Gil was covered in dirt, including his face, and I could smell car oil on him. Have you been working on Bumble Pig? Huh? Well, not exactly, but I was in the workshop. The workshop? That was the spot next door Gil rented and revamped for his car work. Is he making another bumble pig or something? What was it that we said in a, a couple parts ago or the last part or something he was going to make? I forgot what it was. Sorry, I'll go make dinner now. I I craving anything special. It's all right, I'll make dinner. Gil, you need to take a bath first. I nudged a grubby Gil toward the bathroom and headed into the kitchen. By the time dinner was ready, Gil was fresh from his bath. But right after eating, he darted back to the workshop. Take a break with lemon soda. A few days later... Yawn! Oh, wait. <sighs> One morning, I woke up to find Gil had already left. Gil's off to work super early again today. I was on the early shift that day, so I thought I woke up earlier than usual. However, he was already gone. We hadn't been able to have breakfast together for a while because Bill, because Gil had been so busy. I was like, Bill had been so busy. I <laughs> like my brain got dyslexic. The yawn. Oh, now I'm going to yawn again because I said the word. I got through my mouth, but my brain was still working on it. Anyway, that made me feel a bit sad. But he always makes it home for dinner. But when there were dinner meetings, he'd be late coming home. Also, he'd been holed up inside his workshop after dinner every day now. Kill had been burning the midnight oil on some project, causing our lives to fall out of sync. It'd been a while since we last ate breakfast together. We just got married. Maybe I should quit my job to spend more time with him. I mean, to be fair, it's not like you need the money. There were times when Gil was out, was at out road and swamped with work. Days would go by without us speaking. Back then I felt a little... No, I felt super lonely. Gil once told me he chose a job with flexible hours for his partner's sake. Balancing work and family was tough. I thought of Gil's parents. His mother waited at home while his father was always working. What did Gil think about that? For now, I just wanted to know his thoughts. I decided to chat with him about it when he got home that night. That was when I noticed a paper bag. Huh, what's this? A paper bag with the LCI logo was on the sofa. Inside was a car model. Didn't Gil put this bag together because he needed, for, needed it for work the next day? Just then I got a message on my phone. Is there a paper bag from LCI Company with a model in it? Okay, I like the prior one. Oh! This one says 1734 instead of 1234. At the top it still says 1234 APM, but this one says... And now it's 1134. They just like the 34. They, know, they changed the first number. I'm thinking of making your favorite pumpkin pie and crab cakes tonight. What do you think? I bought fresh crabs. Also, we ran out of maple syrup, so I picked some up. Thank you, I'm looking forward to it. Leave the crab shelling to me. Whatever day that was. I just wanted to read it because it's there. Is there a paper bag from LCI Company with a model in it? It read, is there a paper bag? Okay, we already just read that. Gil totally forgot this. I snapped a pic and asked if this was it. He called back immediately. I love the fact that his photo 
is from the wedding CG. It's adorable. Sorry for calling out of the blue. Are you still at home? Uh, I am. Did you forget this, Gil? Want me to drop it off? For real? I really need it for the next meeting. Uh, but you gotta head to work, too. Where's your meeting? It's at the Happy Forest Cafe. Happy Forest Cafe? Understood. I'll get ready immediately, so wait for me there. I'll try to be there in 20 minutes. Really? Thanks. You're a lifesaver. And she's going to be like, it's moments like this and this is why I should quit my job. Listen, I'm not opposed to her doing that to support if that's what she wants to do. But what she is in every route is always like, I love being cute, but I love matchmaking. I love doing this. If your job is becoming a burden and you don't love it as much as you love supporting Gil and being there for little things like that, then yeah, absolutely. But I don't want it to be like, feel like she's feels for like they forced her into making this decision because other people were talking about it. You know what I mean? Make the decision for yourself, not because other people make you feel like you have to do this, you know? After saying that, Gil hung up. I glanced at the time and began to hurry. Fortunately, Happy Forest Cafe was close to the office. If I was fast, I'd make it there on time. Plus, I could grab breakfast there. I tucked Gil's paper bag into my purse to ensure I wouldn't forget it, then quickly prepared to leave. Good for her. I get there and I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> After getting ready in record time, I reached Happy Forest Cafe. Gil arrived at that very moment as well. Sorry for making you do this. No problem. The cafe is on my way to the office. I'm just glad I made it on time. I noticed a group of LCI employees standing behind Gil. President, who is this? Oh, sorry, everyone. I was tinkering with the model for today's presentation and accidentally left it at home. I had it brought to me, but... but by my wife. Oh, so you're President Gil's wife. Uh, pardon us. We've seen your photo so often, but it took us a moment to recognize you. We've seen your photo so often, but we don't... Come on. Nice to meet you. You look just like your photos. Just like the photos? I appreciate how well you all treat my husband. She's like, what do you mean photos? Your whole, his whole fucking office is just plastered with photos of you. I wonder what photos they were referring to. That's when I saw Gil covering his face with his hands, squirming uncomfortably, because he's such a fucking weirdo nerd. I love it, though. Husband. I've never seen the president this flustered before. It's kind of adorable. Listen. Like, it. I'm just gonna say, I don't remember how I felt about Gil on the first one, but so far, it is, it's not bad. I'm 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 here for it, okay? Because him being like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna fucking ruin this wedding dress, and then basically ruining the wedding. Whatever happened that was so embarrassing. She's like, in the wedding dress. Like, I don't know. She could have just been because we had sex while she was wearing a wedding dress. I don't know. I don't know, but it sounds like some weird shit went down. But the fact that that ma this little fucking weirdo in Paris nerd was just like, oh, hell no, and just went fucking buck wild is goddamn hilarious. And then right now we're like, oh, my husband. And he's like, ah, and he's acting. I just, I want the blushy embarrassedness when it's them. I want this. This is funny. When we're doing it, oh my god, they said wife. It's like, okay, get the fuck over it, bitch. When the men do it, it's fun. I like that. I'm here for that. It's kind of adorable. You're like, look at this asshole. Like, look at this awkward nerd. Plus, it's Gil, so awkward nerd works for him. You know what I mean? I love it. He really loves his wife, huh? Their heartfelt comments made me wonder if he was always speaking so fondly of me at work. What does my husband say about me at the office? Don't worry, he doesn't brag about you every day. He just mentions how grateful he is for such an understanding wife. But that's enough for us to see how much he loves you. He has lots of photos of you on his desk. <laughs> so much so there's no computer anymore. Really? Lots, you say? I can understand us being embarrassed about this. Yeah, we're thrilled to finally meet you. We've been a little concerned about the president since he's so busy. We worried he was neglecting his home life. But with a wife like you, we know we'll be fine. I didn't realize how much Gil's employees respect him. Now that he was the new president of LCI, I had no idea 
he how he'd been received by his team. But based on their expressions and body language, I could tell they fully trusted Gil. I mean, I could understand that because you he was just handed the company from his dad, right? You could have no interest in cars. You could have no knowledge of any of this. And then like, great fucking nepotism, baby. We just got to fucking deal with the president, the original guy's kid, whatever. But like Gil knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like he's always been interested in cars. He has the knowledge. So like, you know, so it's nice that they weren't like, like, you know what I mean? That if they're going to do it, they're like, well, let's just do it right. And have him be actually knowledgeable about his job role instead of, I was handed the company by my daddy and whatever, I don't know, you know? Like, he actually cares and knows, you know? Thank you. It's nice to meet you all, too. I'm glad to know that my husband's in good hands. We're the ones that should be thanking you. Since Gil became president, we've had so much more exciting work. Yeah, he always puts the company first. In fact, he just brought in another new project today. A new project? Curious, I watched as Gil sheepishly pulled the model from the paper bag. Yes, our products are considered luxury cars for men. We're thinking of creating a new brand for women. Nice. Good for you. We stan a man who thinks about sexy luxury cars for women, okay? I got that idea while talking to you. Really? Yeah. Things you like, decor you prefer... Observing your choices made me realize what our products were missing. And LCI cars have a reputation for bringing romance. Yeah, that's getting a lot of attention. Well, Bumble Pig is a sexy, sexy vehicle. Question mark? I don't know. I managed to arrange a meeting with a car designer who I want for the interior design. That's why... Just then, someone with a unique fashion sense walked into the cafe. Oh god, huh? I think I've seen that person from somewhere before. It has to be the famous designer. She said unique fashion sense, and I'm like, it better not be fucking Lady Minerva. I recognized him immediately as the famous designer Gil had, Gil had shown me in Carcraft Road, car magazine. So that's who you're meeting with now? Yeah, I'm sorry, Spacey. Oh, I'll see you later. Yeah, good luck with the meeting. I just love the fact that you're meeting with a fancy interior, like somebody who does probably car design i'm assuming not actual interior design interior car design you know because that's different i have an interior design degree it's two year degree so it's like it's 100 years old but like i don't think i could design the inside of a car it's different putting together a nice layout on a house is different than a car different needs you know what i'm saying but um it's just really weird that you're meeting with this guy in a fucking little like cute cafe it's still like at the office but i get it we didn't want to draw a new background and it had to be convenient for us to drop off the thing it for, to him you know what i mean anyway did i say that yes good luck with the meeting anyway thanks i found a separate table and sat down to avoid intruding i then ordered my breakfast when my breakfast arrived gil was conversing with the designer and they exchanged business cards with practiced ease and nice to meet you. I'm Gil Lovecraft, president and representative director, representative director of Lovecraft Industries. Pleasure is all mine. Oh, their salads are the only thing I eat, so I'm glad you suggested this place. Really? This is all you eat is the salads from here? That must be so boring, dude. I often have the salads, too. Their rice cereal bowl salad is excellent. Rice cereal bowl salad. That's a lot of words together. Like rice cereal bowl or their cereal bowl salad or rice salad. Like, but rice cereal bowl salad is just. <laughs> anyway. They started their conversation with casual chatter before smoothly transitioning into work discussions. So, well, that makes more sense. We're just at a random cafe. He, but so Gil did his research, right? He's like, I know this car designer. I know he likes the salads at this place. So I'm going to suggest we have lunch at this place while we do a lunch meeting. Because I know that that'll make him happy. Instead of like, we'll go to this fancy sushi restaurant. And you're like, I'm allergic to fish. You know? Just saying. Or like, we're going to go to this fancy, like, steak joint. And he's like, I'm vegan. You know? You know? Gil did his research. So like, I think he deserves a little. Look, he's all blushing because he's going to get a little pat on the head. Going to go over there. Pat, pat, pat. You're so fucking smart. A little smart cookie, huh? Yes, uh, precisely. We're hoping to incorporate your beautiful design ethos into our new product line. Oh, you seem to know my designs well. 
Um, but I'm not sure they align with the LCI's style. I anticipated you say that, so I prepared this model as part of my proposal. Oh, that's the model I brought earlier. Gil used the model to passionately argue for the compatibility between LCI's vehicle forms and comfort with the designer's aesthetic. As you can see, I believe we can blend your design with our car seamlessly while upholding the LCI tradition and brand image. Recently, we've seen increased demand for more feminine designs among our products. LCI's quality and comfort are consistent. The luxury, which comes from a long wheelbase, needs to be matched with the interior decor. We want to offer a product to a broader audience, so we need your design. We hope you'll join us in this venture. Gil spoke with conviction. He carried the air of a representative uh, uh, from a long-standing company with, like LCI, exhibiting a strong desire to innovate. See, like, he knows what he's doing. He's done his research. He's like, he's a smart boy. Like, kudos. Like, you know, I just like that they did that with him. Like, he loves cars, whatever, and, like, him taking this over is not, he's in above, over his head. It's like, this is, he's passionate about this, and he enjoys the work that he's doing. You know what I mean? He doesn't need us to, like, hold his hand and help him, but we want to be there to support him because, goddamn, he's so good at this, and his passion and drive for this is just outstanding. And you know what? We did our thing as a matchmaker, and... We've left capable people behind us. We've passed our Cupid position on to Cupid, right? You know what I mean? Like, this. Could, so they're, they're, they're setting it up a lot better. Okay, all, this is all I wanted. I wanted them to just set it up better if we were going to quit our job and support him, that it was going to be like, yes, I can get behind this, not what the fuck, why? This makes no sense. I wanted it to make sense. Make it make sense, you know? And it's starting to make sense. You're seeing it. You see his passion, his drive, how good he is at his job. And you're like, yes, his fire and passion is what I had as Cupid. But now that I'm not Cupid anymore, I can let go. I can retire, you know. Gil's bold smile reflected his readiness for the challenge. My eyes were glued to Gil. I rarely got to witness him in his presidential role. In that brief moment, our eyes locked and my heart fluttered, seeing him in such a mature light. Feeling suddenly awkward, I swiftly shifted my attention back to my meal. Yet out of the corner of my eye, I watched Gil negotiate, acting the part of the company president. Seeing this new side of Gil filled me with pride, a sensation I held on to as I finished my meal. And, like, I like my job, don't get me wrong, I like what I do, but I'm not, like, so intensely passionate that if I had a husband like Gil who was, like, so passionate and so invested in his job and, like, knowledgeable and just there, that I would be like, yeah, no, I would give up my job for that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my job doesn't mean that much to me. It does. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it's a paycheck. And I enjoy what I do at the end of the day. Sometimes in the midst of it, I want to, like, literally throw everything across a room and cry. Often, often I cry. It's stressful as shit, but at the end of the day, I do enjoy what I do, you know? <laughs> like, if they learn to simmer down and not try to kill me. But it's not like, oh my god, it's a passion and I enjoy... I enjoy doing this. This is my passion and the thing that I have the fun, fun doing. But I can't make a living doing this, not gonna pay my bills, so... I do something I do enjoy to pay my bills, but, like, not that if I were given the choice. You have an extremely rich husband, and you can keep your job or just quit your job that's giving you all the money and then and then support him, but also maybe do your fun hobby things on the side. I'll do the fun hobby things on the side. I'll do this. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Can we just pay someone to clean, though? Because I don't want to do... You know, I, I'll figure it out. I don't want to do it, but I'll figure it out. As long as you don't think I'm having kids. I'm too fucking old for that. Phew! No, it's not a bug. It's not. You keep doing that. As my shift approached, I've left, I left Happy Forest Cafe, silently cheering Gil on in my heart. Once at my desk, I pop, powered on my computer and checked my tasks for the day. Meanwhile, my mind kept drifting back to the image of Gil earlier. Gil was so cool when he was working. His eloquent speech and dignified mannerisms contrasted starkly with his behavior at home. However, to his employees, this version of Gil was the norm. They had seemed surprised to see him act differently around me. 
I didn't realize that Gil, as president, worked so hard to expand the business. He's probably going to be even busier moving forward. Gil expressed his ambition to provide products for a wider audience, and he was initiating new plans to achieve it. Seeing his employees' deep respect for him during the meeting, I began to feel a bit uneasy. But Gil said he got that idea by spending time with me. He said he wanted to create a brand for women, and he followed my preferences to understand what I liked. That realization stirred a desire within me, a longing to be by his side. Today, I just happened to be home, so I was able to bring him the forgotten model. He might have been late for the meeting without my help. And that could have potentially ruined his opportunity. Okay. I get where they're going with this. Like the... I could be there to support him, but... They, they, like, oh, I was able to help him, and like, if I weren't, wasn't working here, then I could be there to support him in anything that he needed, whatever, and... Uh, okay... But also, if I were home, I could be there at the drop of a hat for anything he need. Okay, that simmered down. That's crazy talk. Now we're leaning into the craziness. I mean, I get what they're trying to go for in her thought process, but it sounds insane. If I didn't have a job and I was just sitting there by the phone waiting for every little beck and call of it, like, no, no, no. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Hi, would you get to bite me? Isn't that nice? You're a beastie bird. What are you doing? Pick a, pick a knee. Pick a knee, bird. Pick a knee. You want me to hold my hand up so you can snugs? All right. But you know what I mean? But I can see, like, where they're leaning. Like, her fire and passion for this is nowhere like his. And, hmm, I want to be able to see my husband. But if he's going to be so busy, I either keep my mild passion for this. It's not like she didn't have one before, but it's kind of dwindled and like she's passed the torch. So now that she's done that, it's like, what's more important to you now? You know, Gil's friend's sister's concept of an ideal marriage came to mind again. I always admired the idea of a wife supporting her husband. She said, don't you think waiting for your working husband to come home is romantic? I think it's classic and romantic in a good way. I don't know if it's romantic, but sure. I mean, different strokes for different folks. Classic and romantic, huh? It was true that in the human realm, marriages had operated that way for a long time. Mm -mm, okay, yeah. That dynamic was the original form of a husband-wife relationship. Trying to deny it felt strange to me. Okay, okay, all right. See, I don't like this, though. Don't try that bullshit on me, game. This is like, the dynamic was the original form of a husband-wife relationship. T denying that it's, it's strange. Nah, yeah. It was the original form of a husband and wife relationship, but not because the wife chose that. Because women were property, and your property did what you said, and they were there to do a job for you. Okay? You purchased your women... I'm sorry, actually, women folks' parents paid you to take her as your property. Okay? Like, nah, we're not going to do this. We're like, oh, denying that is strange because that's a woman. No, 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 don't give me that bullshit. If you, choose, if you and your husband make these decisions and you choose this for yourself and that's what works for you, fine. But don't give me this bullshit. That's the way it worked for centuries. And like, yeah, because women were property. We ain't going back to that shit. You're like, no, 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 no. Don't make it a, well, it's tradition. Yeah, and no, then then you might as well not be allowed to vote, and you shouldn't be wearing pants either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 no. Don't try that game. Don't don't backtrack. You were going on a good path where I'm like, okay, she's gonna make this decision for herself and realize this is more important to her than working at Cupid Core and like you have to weigh the con the pros and the cons and like what's best for you, your relationship, your family, and what's gonna make you happiest. Cool, I'm fine with that, but not this. Well, I mean, it'd be wrong to deny that a woman was always staying home. I'm gonna slap you. Stop that. The norm for modern marriages was probably both exist and both are fine. Okay, yes. Gil wanted to continue expanding LCI, but what could I contribute? I pondered that as I returned to my work. Hmm. Today I'm meeting with some team members, then there's a networking event at night. I felt someone's presence beside me then. Hmm? I looked up and froze. 
It was Sylvie. Hello, I'm Sylvie Scott, and I'm starting my internship at Cupid Core today. Internship? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. We have a new intern starting today. Could you look after him? Intern. You know, and this is even... Okay, 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 okay. So now I see why they threw Sylvie in here. Because in all the other ones, there was no new Cupid. And I was like, it's strange that they decided in this one there was going to be a new Cupid. I get it, though. I kind of could see it in the back of my mind earlier when I was like, okay, if she's going to decide because it's like, oh, there's a new Cupid out there. So I don't have to like, you know what I mean? Like she's passed the torch. That'll be part of letting go of working at Cupid Core type of a thing. But now here's Sylvie being up here going, hi, I'm here to work and I'm an intern. And then she's really going to pass the torch fully for both roles on to hit. Okay. All right. And that's fine. That's fine, but just don't give me that, like, well, it's traditional, and, like, there's a reason. Again, don't don't go pulling, like, ye olde times into this when women were property. Nah. If you're making this decision with a modern lens, cool. Fine. That's perfectly fine. Sh sure. I was a little confused. After that, my coworker returned to her desk. I turned to our new intern. Well, actually, the rookie Cupid. The rookie Cupid. Senior Cupid, let's do this! Cupid! Sylvie's eyes were glittering as he looked at me. I just think it's funny that his name's Sylvie. <laughs> it's like a girl's name. I don't know if I... I mean, okay. Like, yes, traditionally there were names that are now girls' names that were boys' names and vice versa. But I don't think I've ever heard of a man named Sylvie. But I just... So I'm not really sure did they do that on purpose. Like, Sylvie picked his own name and was just like, I like this one. And you're like, okay, what whatevs. Did they give it to the gods just not know? Or like, you know what I mean? I mean, to be fair, I feel like that happens a lot in Atome games where you have names and you're like, okay. It would be typically a more feminine name, but sure. <laughs> sure game. Sylvie, the rookie Cupid, was now an intern at Cupid Corps. You're still here? Yes. I forgot the voice we kind of gave him because it's starting to sound like Gil, but whatever. Wasn't that, I mean, wasn't Lord Mars mad? It's okay. We'll, well, to be precise, I did go back. But then I started wondering how to approach my work after observing some humans. And then Lord Jupiter suggested that I become an intern. That's why I'm back. Of course course Jupiter did. Jupiter did? Yes, I was ordered to stay for about four years to learn from the previous Cupid. The previous Cupid, meaning me. I had simply left home after having a fight with Dad and came to the human realm, but it seemed like Lord Jupiter approved of what I did. He was here the whole fucking time. Gee, I see. So Lord Jupiter said it was fine. I wondered how Sylvie got into Cupid Corps despite being in the human realm for such a short while. Then I remembered what Auntie said. Auntie said that the Deconsentes have the ability to manipulate people. Maybe it was Dad, Auntie, or even Lord Jupiter that did something. Either way, Cupid Corps was now officially recognized as a Cupid training facility for interns. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. All right, then I'll give you a lecture for Cupids on how to do matchmaking in the human realm. Yes, please. That started my busy life with my regular tasks at Cupid Core, as well as training the rookie Cupid. So we could, like, again, like, you could absolutely, like, in this case, like, okay, after a little while, yeah, I don't get to see Gil. Cupid's there to take over, you know, or Sylvie, whatever. You know, he's there to take over, but you can still help him learn how to be Cupid, you know, part-time supporting him while supporting Gil. Like, you know, I can see if that's the path they're going, and that's fine. But I wasn't the only one who was busy. Yeah, this is going to be our main problem statement, is that we're so busy to see each other, so we're going to end up quitting. Which is fair. I'm off to the workshop again. I'll be back before bedtime. That day, Gil was about to leave for the workshop right after dinner. Gil left earlier than me in the morning again. We didn't get to eat breakfast together, and he'd probably go to bed later than me. Every single day was busy with no days off. 
After coming home, he worked in the workshop. It had been like this for days. Stop him. Don't stop him. I, f Ooh. I feel like we should... Stomp him seems the spicy answer, and I feel like we need a spicy answer, right? Because based on the choices we've already made, the gray dress was the spicy answer. Being gentle with him and everything, those were the, we had two sweet answers. Although stop him could be the sweet answer. I feel like that's, the game probably wants you to be like, no, just let him go on his way and suffer. You know what I mean? Oh, we're a woman. We need to suffer in silence where a man does his manly things. And it's like, no, I feel like we should stop him and be a little selfish. And that should be spicy, you know? Like, hey, we haven't seen each other in a while. We should, if you're going to go be busy, let's let's find a time to do something or plan something. You know what I mean? So I say stop him. Good for us. That's the spicy answer. Guilt, wait. Hmm? What's wrong? Well, you haven't rested recently, so I'm worried about your health. Also, the fact that, like, Gil, you're a... Well, you're the love lore and parasite, but you're basically because you're obsessed with me. And hello? I'm going to need a little more fucking attention. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm used to you smothering me, and now you're not around, and this is weird. I don't know how to deal with this. Spicy. Ching. I'm totally fine. It thanks for worrying about me. I'm off now. Oh. You're like, I'm also worried about my mental health, but sure, bye. He's gone. Gil was also working on the sequel, The Love Letters for You. At LCI, except for dinner functions or important meetings, he worked remotely while delegating many task to, tasks to his employees. He was able to get a little bit more free time now, but he goes straight into the workshop whenever he has any time. I didn't know what he was making, but if he was that passionate about it, it must have been important. Maybe I should bring him something to drink to encourage a break. That way I could be with him a little longer. Well, I was thinking that I looked at the kitchen that Gil had cleaned up. A few hours later... Gil, you there? I entered the workshop and saw Gil bent over, staring at the monitor. It looked like he was doing some programming. Lots of complicated stuff showed on the screen. Gil was completely focused and didn't notice I was there. What is he doing? There were lines of code there, and I just couldn't believe this was part of doing car maintenance. Then again, Bumble Pig isn't exactly a car. Could it be like modifying the robot? I watched in silence when Gil finally realized I was there. Uh, Speezy? You were here? Sorry I didn't notice. What's up? Nothing. I wondered if you'd take a break soon. I brought you some lemon soda. Would you like to drink together? Yay! I'll definitely take a break now. Thanks for the drink. Gil happily took the glass of lemon soda. I sat down on the chair next to him and we toasted before drinking it down. Hmm, this is good. The lemon syrup for the soda was something Gil made himself. He was completely focused on tinkering with machines, but he hadn't changed one bit with these things. Phew, that was delicious. <laughs> good work on everything. So, Gil, what are you making here? Huh? Uh... For some reason, Gil looked away bashfully. Well, there was an immediate need for me to develop something new. I still don't know if it'll work, though. But if all goes well, I can also... Gil started mumbling to himself when he glanced at me. I want to be able to protect you no matter what threat comes our way. Oh, right, that's what it was. I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking he was going to He's going to build a fucking, like, Iron Man suit. What kind of threat is he thinking about? He fought Dad, the God of War Mars, so now I'm wondering if he's what he's thinking about. Still confused at the whole thing, Gil put down his empty glass on the table and stared at me. Hey, can you come over here? Huh? Gil playfully opened his arms. I put down my glass and he pulled at my hand. Oh, do we get a CG? I was just going to be like, we need more CGs. Look at, oh my! Uh, Gil, I love this! I mean, because Gil's a little, like, look at him, he's a little dirty. He's got his glasses in his pocket, and he's a little mussed up, like, 
got some dirt sma- like smudges on his face. I don't know what it is. There's something sexy about it. Never expected that. But like, okay, look at you. Get a little dirty. Look at, you, look at him pulling her. He's, we're in his lap. Nice. Gil drew me in and made me sit on his lap. He hugged me tightly right after. Mm, you smell nice. Phew, this is so calming. Gil seemed to have decided on taking a break with me on his lap. He took a few deep breaths and smiled so happily. Hey, Gil, isn't it tiring like this? No way. I feel the happiest being like this. All that tiredness melts away. Gil hugged me so happily, but I felt at ease being able to feel Gil's warmth up close and personal. Although we were in bed together every night, it had been a while since we hugged while we were still awake. Ah, uh, this sure recharges my batteries. Gil hugged me happily, but he seemed to be tired. <laughs> Are you tired? Well, yeah, but I'm fine now because you're here. We kissed and he rubbed his forehead on me like a cat. We bumped both our foreheads together. Sorry, I've just been so busy recently. No, it's all right. Despite your busy schedule, you still managed to cook dinner. Thank you. Well, I want to be in charge of all the food that enters your body. He traced my belly with a single finger, giggling. So it's all good. I cook because I want to. Love Lorne Gil Lovecraft. His obsession with me hadn't changed, even after we got married. But if things get tough, you have to let me know. I'll take over cooking dinner. We're in this together, okay? Yeah, thanks. Despite his gentle smile, it was clear that he was growing increasingly fatigued. Gil was swamped as the president of LCI, and he also had work to do in the workshop. Perhaps he was developing another product line for LCI. I then recalled a co-worker talking about quitting work if she ever married the president of LCI. I uh, hope she's not talking a president of a company. Not of our specific one. If I want to be with him, it might be better to adjust to Gil's lifestyle. The other day I was able to deliver his things because I was at home. If I hadn't been there, Gil would have been in a bind. Hey, Gil... Hmm? If I decided to quit work and stay at home, would you prefer that? Huh? I asked that cautiously and Gil seemed taken aback. Well, if you do stay at home, if you're asking whether I'd like it, I'd be absolutely thrilled, but... But you don't want to quit, right? You love your job. Yeah, that's true, but... And then I want you to do what feels right for you. If you want to quit, that's fine. If you want to continue, that's fine, too. Don't worry about me. Your happiness is what matters most. After saying that, Gil gave a bashful smile. That's exactly what you want your husband to be like. Like, look, I'm happy either way. I would love for you to be at home, but I also want you to be happy, not be like, whatever makes you happy, but I would prefer you worked. You know what I mean? He's honest about his feelings. As always, Gil respected what I wanted above all else. But Gil did mention he'd be really happy if I quit. It was clear that Gil did want me to stay at home. But this is unexpected. You're the Cupid Parasite, so I didn't anticipate hearing that from you. I just thought it would allow me to spend more time with you. Huh? Gil froze. I could see him starting to blush. Just when I thought he looked adorable blushing. He reached over, pulling my face close. He kissed me passionately. Well, you can't say things like this to this man. Certainly don't wear a wedding dress. Hmm? Huh? And that's not fair. You can't just say something so endearing. His tongue intertwined with mine, gently nibbling on my lip. His gaze, full of passion, seemed to pierce right through me. I, I thought I needed to improve myself first. But when my sweet wife is so considerate of me, I can't hold back any longer. Oh, we're going to do it right here in the garage. He stroked my cheek and brushed my ear with his fingertips. Wait, right here? You don't want to? It's not that I don't want to. Hey, Spacey, you don't have to work tomorrow, right? Y yeah, I took time off since you'll be free too. Oh, neither one of us is leaving the house. Yeah, that's right. Gil gave me a suggestive smile. 
His inviting gaze tried to pull me in. All we had to do was bring him soda and be like, hey. And he was all over it. That was the signal. His warm breath touched me, making my entire body quiver. Gil. Spacey, I love you. Possibly because I felt a chill, his fingers seemed hotter than usual. I realized when he touched me that I had craved this loving caress for a while. I always wanted to be in his arms. Lately, my days have been filled with work and sleep. I felt a kind of sweet numbness from his touch. I clung to him tightly. And right there, somewhere unusual, we made love. I can't believe they actually said it out loud. They're usually like, blah, 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 and then it goes dark and you're like, you know what happened, but they never said we made love. Have they ever actually specifically said it? Our exciting and sweet night went on. Like, you know what I mean? They'll be like, it was passionate thrills throughout the night, but they never specifically say that. So I'm kind of shocked that they straight up told you. You hint, and we know, but damn. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here, and we will... We're sleeping, so this is going to be Gil's thought process in the aftermath. So... I will see you next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.